Hey guys, today I want to talk about Lead Code. So Lead Code is definitely something that many of us are familiar with. And if you're thinking about getting into tech, Lead Code will be almost essential for getting you a job at some of the bigger tech companies. But practicing Lead Code alone won't make you a great software engineer. And here are some of the reasons why. First, Lead Code focuses on the algorithm aspect of problem solving. And many times, the questions, the prompts that they're asking you is not very similar to what you might encounter in the real world. You don't have to worry about a lot of the infrastructure aspects or how certain things need to be built. For example, many times if you see a solution on Lead Code, it's the very fancy one-line solution that Python offers. But a lot of times, these aren't the most readable solutions and it doesn't follow the certain styling patterns that your future employers may have. And that's why being able to solve lead code efficiently, it doesn't necessarily reflect how you might be coding on the day-to-day -day job. And second aspect is the fact that lead code is more so similar to competitive mathematics. You, it's more of like a competitive format. And a lot of times these aren't the best thing a software engineers may have. Because a lot of times by contributing, writing code really fast, it doesn't necessarily imply this is the ideal solution. And a lot of time you also have to work with your team members on a piece of a software rather than the whole feature. So having the mindset of competitiveness or in the speed and purely chasing after efficiency may not always yield you the most ideal software that you have to build. So I would say a lot of times a successful software engineers have the ability to work very efficiently with other people, but also have a strong understanding of the current pattern that the code might have and how to build new features using the pattern and make necessary improvements that can scale over the long run rather than having a very particular one-way solution. And this also comes with the aspect that how realistic are lead code? For example, during my work experience, I have not yet did any of the breadth first search or any sort of graph traversal. And while my colleague who've been working for eight years had one chance to finally build something that require you to do graph traversal, but it wasn't for the final feature, but rather for analyzing some of the use cases. So it's an internal facing tool. So a lot of times this shows like, hey, like a lot of the stuff that we have to learn and we have to focus on for this decode doesn't really reflect on the day-to-day -day jobs, especially if your job is to become like a full stack or mobile developers. And a lot of times, decode also doesn't offer you a lot about development process, such as debugging. It has a slight touch on testing, but it's also very limited. Many times doing a developers, we all know one of the most time consuming thing on a day-to-day -day basis is actually debugging something. And debugging is one of the most important skill that software developer needs to have. And Lico focus on, oh yeah, let's solve the solutions, like how do we get there? But it doesn't provide you the debugging aspects. It provides you the test cases, but it's not a test-driven development cycle. So of course, a lot of these skills that a software engineer needs to have are also lacked purely if you are just grinding Lico. So Lico alone also has a lack of focus beyond just optimizing the runtime speed because when you run a code, it shows you how fast it runs, what the memory usage is. But in the real world applications, when you're building softwares, you not only have to consider optimization, but you also have to care about performance, stability, maintainability, and readability. All of these are trade-offs that one approach may offer versus another. And being able to really understand the different solutions and understand some of these trade-offs are what differentiate between a good senior developer versus someone who's just starting off. And if you're just purely prioritizing optimization, the runtime speed, you might miss out on a lot of other aspects that pushes you from not being a very well-rounded software engineer. Last but not least, LeetCode also make it so you may not see the bigger picture. Because LeetCode type of questions are meant to focus on a specific scenario that's very, very exact. And many times during the interviews, you are encouraged to ask clarification questions, but LeetCode alone doesn't offer you that ability. So if you are just purely practicing LeetCode, you're missing out on a lot of these bigger pictures. For example, if I'm building a software, a lot of times the information that I get it's very ambiguous. I need to evaluate the project and try to come up with different solutions and really compare them one versus the other. And a lot of times these skills are gained over time, over personal projects, over coursework, or 
at work when you're working on these projects. And these are the things that Leeco alone won't be able to offer you. So yeah, these are the reasons why Leeco won't make you a great software engineer. But guess what? You still need to know Leeco for a lot of these bigger tech interviews. And in order to get those jobs, you still need to master it. So it's really learning something purely for the interviewing aspect. Of course, a lot of smaller companies nowadays, like startups, are moving away from legal type question, more so of like, hey, come work with us for a week, try to build some feature that we are currently working on using our tech stack, and let's see how well we work together of such. Of course, like these are way more time consuming. So yeah, overall, if your goal is to become a good software engineer, then just grinding Lico won't get you there. And you might be surprised after you get a job. And for example, I was extremely surprised when I got my job because it has nothing to do with Lico, has nothing to do with the coursework I took. I was like, wow, I had to learn from ground. So yeah, I hope this video was informative. Let me know what you guys think about Lico. Is it really necessary to qualify you as a good developer? Or what's something else that we can do to make it more reflective of a software engineer's ability to code? Thank you so much for watching. I will talk to you guys next time.